Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on VLAN. Let's start our part 2. So here is our assignment mode, okay? So as I mentioned earlier on, we have different way of assigning VLAN, all right? So this is a priority. Now the first priority uh, the switch will always examine is if you have a policy base, it will based on the policy base as the way to assign your VLAN. All right, then it will be go to the MAC address or IP subnet then protocol base and finally the interface VLAN. So this is the first priority, second priority, third priority and the last priority. So this is in order. Okay, so MAC address and the IP subnet assignment mode have the same priority. So that's why you can see that I put that at the second priority. You can run the command to change the priority of this two VLAN assignment mode to select the VLAN uh, assigning mode. Okay, and the interface VLAN assign assignment has the lowest priority and this is being commonly used and policy base having the highest priority but it's seldom used okay so do aware that the way a Huawei switch assign the VLAN we have multiple way all right and uh, because we have multiple way interface base Mac base subnet base protocol base and policy base that's why it's important for you to know how the VLAN assignment order all right, so let's examine the VLAN communication. So we have access interface, trunk interface, and hybrid interface. So here we have un untagged frame, tag frame, and the tag transmission. So assuming that now we have a PC that connect to a switch. All right, so when we are going to send this into the port, let's say that this is a G01 and this is the access all right and the pvid for this is a vlan 2 so when i go into the the traffic go into this particular port the switch here will determine that this one will be a vlan 2 all right so untag frame receive the frame and add the pvid to the frame okay now when the tag frame is being processed which means that if assuming that now this particular PC, all right, have the same VLAN. So this is a VLAN 2, this is a VLAN 2, and this is a VLAN 3. So when you enter, it will based on the VLAN 2. So it will going to determine. So this is a G01, G02, and G03. So since this is a tag of a VLAN, and this is a tag of a VLAN 2, is going to send to the VLAN 2 based on the tag that you insert. Remember that you, when you go into the VLAN, you are using VLAN 2. So when you come out, all right, so the tag will be removed based on the VLAN that you have. All right, so that is what it means here, tag frame processing. Receive the frame if the frame VLAN ID is the same as the PV ID. Discard the frame if the frame PV ID or VLAN ID is different. So during the transmission, the host doesn't aware about the VLAN when it's sent or received. Okay, so that if you are using SS interface. Alright, so next we look into the trunk uh, interface. Now in trunk interface, if the trunk is untagged, then what will happen? It will add the PVID to the frame and then accept it if the PVID is permitted. It basically means that if assuming that now I have a host, all right, so this host connect to a hub and the hub connect to a switch. Let's say this is a switch one connect to switch number two. So since this host connect to the hub and the hub connect to the switch, so what type of VLAN is this? The answer is there isn't have any VLAN. Now because this port is a trunk port, now you have the option to configure port trunk default PVID. Now if you never configure this default PVID, it will become the VLAN 1. Assuming that you are going to configure default PVID is 3. Now assuming that now this switch receive an untag. 
untapped VLAN. So what will happen here is it's going to check what is your default PVID and if the default PVID is 3, then this particular frame will belong to uh, VLAN, uh, VLAN 3. Okay, so add the PVID to the frame and then accept it if the PVID is permitted by the interface. So which means that you still need to do a permit uh, VLAN to pass through. What if this is a tag frame instead of untag frame? So accept the frame if the frame ID is permitted. So on the trunk, you need to permit the uh, VLAN and discard the frame if it's being denied. So we have the permit trunk as well as the deny the VLAN. Now during the transmission, it will remove the tag from the frame and send it if the frame ID is the same as the PV ID. That's what we mentioned over here. And the VLAN ID is permitted by the interface. So we need to make sure that the trunk also accept the frame based on your default PV ID. So if let's say there is a tag already, so it will retain the tag and send the frame if the frame VLAN ID is different from the PV ID and the VLAN ID is permitted by the interface. All right, so that will be on the trunk interface. And lastly, on the hybrid interface, those that is untagged and the tag will be processed exactly just like the trunk interface, except it will send the frame if the frame VLAN is permitted by the interface. The interface can be configured whether to transmit the frame with a tag or untagged. All right, so that's the difference between a tag uh, or trunk interface with the hybrid interface. The difference over here is this part here. All right, you can do it as a tag or you can do it as an untag. All right, so let's examine some of the example to, uh, to fully understand how the behavior of the hybrid interface. So let's look into how the VLAN communicate uh, in different switches. So here I have two VLANs. So we have a VLAN 2 and a VLAN 3 here. And between this VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, I have two switches, switch number 1 and switch number 2. Both of them are connected through a trunk link. So here I have PC1 and PC2 that need to be communicated together. Now when the traffic enter into the switch, it is untagged VLAN. But when you go into the switch inside here, it's going to do a tagging based on VLAN2. And it will going to send it out if you are belong to VLAN2 or across the trunk port if this trunk port allowed VLAN2 to pass through. So these pieces those that are belong to VLAN 2 able to communicate. Same thing go for the VLAN 3 as well. So once you have the trunk port, it will transparently transmit VLAN packet between switches and transmit packet belong to multiple VLAN. Now there is only one problem. Can I communicate between these two? Well, because that they are belong to two different broadcast domain. All right, so we have two broadcast domain over here. Now you need to cross a layer 3 device okay so here let's examine uh, inter VLAN instead of uh, intra VLAN now inter VLAN basically means that uh, between two different VLAN so by default if let's say you want to connect PC1 with PC2 in different VLAN the VLAN will not allow you to pass through because this belong to two different broadcast domain except if you have a layer 3 device so here I have a switch that add as a layer 3 and for this to work I'm going to configure two things firstly this physical interface I have to configure as a trunk link and second, I'm going to configure the sub interface. And assuming that this is my G01, so I have a VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, I'm going to do a G01.2 and 1.3. And uh, assuming that here I have 10.1.2.1, and here I have 10.1.3.1. 10 10 so I will have a 10.1.2.254 and 10.1.3.254 as my default gateway. So if let's say these two need to communicate, first it will go into my switch one, the switch one will go to the trunk, pass through the layer three and then it came down to you. All right, so this will be my IP and my default gateway will be 10.1.2.254 and my default gateway 
10.1.3.254 alright so this is one of the way for you to configure the inter VLAN communication through the uh, sub interface now the easiest way for us to configure the inter VLAN communication is that if it's a switch that can support layer 3 function so here we are going to configure the uh, interface VLAN interface VLAN so here we have interface VLAN 2 and interface VLAN 3 and because I have the interface VLAN 2 and 3 so here just like the previous example I have my IP address 10.1.2.1 with the default gateway of 10.1.2.254 here I have a IP address of 10.1.3.1 with a default gateway of 10.1.3.254 and here the VLAN 2 will be .254 and uh, .254 so here we have .2.254 and .3.254 similar to the earlier example the traffic will go in through this particular interface all right uh, that is our access interface here and here I have the layer 3 function it's going to do a perform a layer 3 lookup and send back to the PC2 which is in the VLAN 3 so this is an explanation here after sending the first data flow through the routing table which is a layer 3 all right, so layer 3 switch generate a mapping table for which is record the mapping between the MAC address and the IP address. If the switch need to send the same flow again, it directly send the flow at layer 2. This is important because using this type of configuration, the lookup will be faster. All right, as compared to the earlier one, if let's say this is a layer 3, typically we configure as a router. All right, typically this is a router with a trunk. So here, the performance will not be as great as compared to a uh, using the layer 2 base mapping table. Or in this case, we are looking into the uh, forwarding table based on the layer 2 technology. All right. Okay, so now let's examine uh, VLAN aggregation. All right, so for those of you who have uh, used the VLAN before, uh, most likely you will never hear about the VLAN aggregation. All right, so what's the VLAN aggregation? VLAN aggregation is a very special feature where if you look into this diagram, I have three VLAN, VLAN 2, VLAN 3, and VLAN 4. And you notice that all these VLAN having the uh, same subnet. You can see that this is 111 24 and uh, 111 111 24. So the basic concept of a VLAN aggregation allow you to have the same subnet with the different VLAN all right that, that is very unique all right because uh, from the uh, previous uh, PowerPoint you will notice that every single VLAN we need to use one subnet because itself uh, is one broadcast domain so now we have three different VLAN in this case I have three different broadcast domain and I'm using a same subnet so that's the main reason behind why we want to use a VLAN aggregation because we want to save IP okay so let's look into the concept here so here in this diagram we divide this uh, VLAN aggregation into two parts first part is called super VLAN and the second part is called sub VLAN now sub VLAN is just a normal VLAN alright so you create the port alright so this this particular interface let's say that this is my G0 slash 3 you are going to assign it as a VLAN 4 okay so this is a G0 slash 2 you assign that as VLAN 3 and so on and so forth alright so the concept here is basically is I have three physical VLAN but all these VLAN are using the uh, same subnet and on top of that we are going to create what we call the super VLAN now super VLAN do not have any physical port all right this one is just a L3 uh, VLAN interface okay VLAN interface so we create this um, VLAN 10 with the IP address okay 1.1.1.1 and here we will assign it as a super VLAN so if you look into the definition super VLAN is a set of multiple sub VLAN so you can have multiple VLAN under here it can be one VLAN or it can be many many VLAN under here 
In a Super VLAN, only layer 3 interface are created. So remember, no physical interface. All right, so this is purely logical. Now, Sub VLAN is used to isolate broadcast domain, as I mentioned over here. So we do have the port and the VLAN. In a Sub VLAN, only physical interface exists and uh, layer 3 VLAN cannot be created. So the Super VLAN is to implement layer 3 switching. All right, so this is a basic concept of on the VLAN aggregation. A uh, later part, we are going to look into the configuration on the VLAN aggregation. Now, some of you will ask a question here. So since I have two different VLAN, I have a sub VLAN 2 here, and I also have a sub VLAN 3 over here. How the PC1 and PC2 communicate among themselves if let's say they are having the, sub, sub, uh, the same subnet? Now, the uh, trick over here is to enable the proxy up. Okay, so we have to enable the proxy up so that when this PC1 look for PC2, which is uh, 1.1.1.20, is going to perform an ARP. And because that the switch has enabled the uh, proxy ARP, it will actually reply on the PC2 on, uh, on behalf of PC2, and the S1 also will connect to the S2. So the proxy up enable PC1 and PC2 to able to communicate among themselves. And if let's say PC1 want to go out, let's say now I have another interface here to the router. So anything that you want to go out, then you have a default gateway. And your default gateway will be pointing to 1.1.1.1, which is the default gateway for the interface VLAN, which is also the super VLAN. So this is the um, method on how the uh, PC1 and PC2 able to communicate between two different VLAN and able to communicate outside its VLAN. Alright, so let's look into the VLAN aggregation in more detail. Let's examine the layer 2 communication in VLAN aggregation. So here I have a PC1 with an IP address of 1.1.1.10 I want to communicate within its own VLAN. So the communication here will be sending to the S1 with a tag of VLAN 2. Now, even though you have a super VLAN of uh, VLAN 10, this guy do not have any physical interface. Okay, no physical interface. So when we actually pass through the S1 and S1 allowed the trunk to pass through, so the trunk will carry the VLAN 2. Same go for this interface as well. So if let's say this is from PC2, then I will carry the VLAN 3 um, information. This is only if let's say you are communicate within your own VLAN. Alright, so uh, if you look into the layer 3, then this will be slightly different. Now firstly, uh, assuming that PC1 want to communicate with PC3. If let's say this is my source IP, and my destination IP is 1.1.3.2. Now clearly, this uh, source and destination uh, belong to two different subnets. So firstly, PC1 is going to go for the default gateway. So I'm going to send an ARP to the default gateway, which is reply uh, by the Super VLAN. Okay. Now, once the Super VLAN receive it, it's going to check the destination is actually forward to another subnet. So if we're going to forward to VLAN 10, VLAN 10 is our common VLAN. All right, so we have a sub VLAN, VLAN 2, we have a super VLAN that is replying the up proxy to PC1, and we have a common VLAN that is having a common VLAN with S1 and S2. So we have 1122 and 1121. So this will use layer 3 lookup, and the normal communication will take place. So when it back to S2, S2 is going to forward back into the super VLAN and ARP will perform again. All right, so uh, there you have it on how the uh, VLAN aggregation work on the uh, layer 2 as well as the layer 3. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.